Wow, do we have a lot of news that happened in the past week. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go over the clips by the independent news producers and a couple other people who are providing uh, like the, the, the gist of what's happened in the last week. And then we're going to dig into some primary source documents. We're going to get to the bottom of who, what, where, when, why, and how in some of these events and ask, actually ask some questions to provide the context so we can understand what's going on because I have a feeling that as we go on in 2021, the, the weeks seem to be packing in more and more things that are going on. Some of them are smoke screens, some of them are diversions, some very serious things also going on behind the scenes. We're going to dip into uh, many of those things this evening as we tour through the past seven days events. But first, we need to get in the time machine, go back to the year 2013, because at the end of this video that we're about to see is something very substantial, and it does tie into the first news story of this evening's tour. So let's go ahead, control room, bring up that first clip for this evening, and let's go back to see what the iPhone 5 NSA uh, product placement advertisement was back then. It's a spoof, it's a satire. This is not actual product placement, so be, a f be don't be afraid to laugh. It's still not illegal to laugh at these jokes. Go ahead. iPhone 5 NSA is the best surveillance device to date. It is a meticulously designed tracker recorder, and data collector. Every single government agency, authority, and police officer has been considered to make sure iPhone 5 NSA can keep you safe and protect your freedom. This care, this consideration, it extends to how we collect information pertaining to you and everyone you know. And it's what led us to create Touch ID the largest name to fingerprint database in the world. Touch ID defines the next step of how we use your iPhone. With just a touch of your home button, Touch ID reads your fingerprint so you can collect the latest apps or purchase shiny new Apple products, while we track your location through GPS and transmit data back to corporations and government. Our employees are literally working around the clock, in some cases 12 hours a day, six days a week, to assemble each iPhone 5 NSA individually. And now we require all of them to sign an anti-suicide pledge to ensure our production meets your, the consumer's, demand. And just in case that doesn't work, we've installed suicide nets all along the perimeter of our 24 to a room dormitories to gently catch even the most demoralized and broken down souls and safely return them to the workplace so there's enough iPhones for you and your entire family. iPhone 5 NSA uses speech recognition technology so you don't have to bother yourself with remembering things or consulting your brain for any information ever again. Just ask it for the time, the day of the week, what your name is, sports scores, anything really. You can ask it anything. It puts your brain in your hand and into our database. We've also developed what we like to call blackout technology, which allows authorities to block video and photos whenever they feel your security is in danger. For instance, if a political rally is ambushed by a conspiracy theorist demanding answers, the police can black out every phone in the crowd so his questions are never heard or seen by anyone. Reporters, do your job, please ask some questions. And once he's silenced and his coordinates are locked in, iPhone 5 NSA takes care of the rest. Just a question, man. How are we supposed to know the truth when we can't even ask a question? It was just a question. That's all it was. iPhone 5 NSA. Aiming to put your freedom in the crosshairs. That was, that was uh, uh, a team up between Joy Camp, between Benny Wills and Kevin Kostelnik, and Luke Radowski of We Are Change. And at the end there, if you notice, they use the metadata collected from his phone to call in a drone strike and hit him because he's got freedom of speech. 
that type of parhesia, and that wasn't even popular back in 2015, so much so that they made a parody video about the situation, about that type of technology, that track trace database type of situation that Jason Burmis has been telling you about since like 2009. These are not new concepts. However, what is new is what they've been doing with that metadata and what they're planning and saying on TV that they want to do with this metadata. So let's go before we go to the next clip. Control Room, can you guys bring me up a clip where it's Mike Hayden, the former director of NSA and CIA. He says uh, what they use metadata for. He says we use metadata to kill people. Could we actually hear it in the former director's words? Because it doesn't seem so credible when you hear it on Grand Theft World. But if you heard it from former director of uh, Signals Intelligence at NSA, Civilian Intelligence at CIA, He's telling you what they use the metadata for. So let's go to either Justin or Lawrence, whoever can pull it up first and put something on screen relevant to that type of data collection mentioned by Mike Hayden. I know it's in the Peace Revolution podcast, but I don't want to dig up the audio. Let's go to Lawrence. Looks like he has it on screen. Yeah, there's an RT article here. Looks like there's a video. And... The headline is, he's, it says, we kill people based on metadata. That, that was the quote that they could take from what he says. Let's see if this video will play for us. Yeah, this is an hour and 14 minutes long. So uh, Then the source material we will be linked up at grandtheftworld.com for this podcast episode. But now you know it's there. You know it's been said. So that was something that was made fun of in 2015 in the Joy Camp video. Now, in our next story, we're going to go to Luke Radowski, who was featured at the end of that last video, getting hit by the drone strike. He's, in a surreally, really interesting way, going to cover this news story where CNBC was calling for the use of drone strikes on American citizens who they deem to be domestic terrorists. And again, this is not us saying so, John Hammond. That is a bulletin released to all law enforcement earlier this week that there is, until the end of April, a persistent threat of domestic extremism, domestic uh, terrorism carried out in the ideology and around this belief that the election um, was fraudulent, that the COVID restrictions are unnecessary. All of those ideologies pushed by Donald Trump. But, but my question for you is around incitement. Um, we had a policy, and it was very controversial. It was carried out under the Bush years and under the Obama years of attacking terrorism at its root, of going after and killing um, and in the case of Amr al awlaki an American, a Yemeni American, with a drone strike for the crime of inciting violence, inciting terrorism. Mitch McConnell was in the Senate then. He was in the Senate after 9-11, too. How does Mitch McConnell, who understands that the way you root out terrorism is to take on, in the case of Islamic terrorism, kill those who incite it, how does he not vote to convict someone that he said on the floor of the Senate incited an insurrection? Wow. Just when you think things can't get any crazier, here we are today with MSNBC saying that the best thing to stop the incitement of violence is to call for the incitement of violence, specifically drone bombing anyone who doesn't like the lockdowns. Yeah. Welcome back, beautiful and amazing human beings. This is Luke Radowski of We Are Change the Org. A lot of very important issues to get into today, especially with the hyperbolic and extremely dangerous language on MSNBC. That, along with an extremely eye-opening article by Time Magazine about a secret, powerful, well-funded cabal that was involved in in the elections so yeah just uh, another wild and crazy news day to get into which uh, to be honest i'm even i'm even shocked to see the former bush cheney campaign spokesperson for the white house nicole wallace quite nonchalantly just talking about the extrajudicial assassination of american citizens without a judge jury or court all of course for the horrible crimes of of, of not believing them now to say that this is sick and demented thinking is definitely an understatement and as glenn greenwald points out saying quote neocons like bill crystal david from bush cheney operatives like nicole wallace and rick wilson haven't changed in the slightest they believe everything they believed back when they were hated by liberals they're beloved by liberals now because u.s liberalism has changed and as another user puts it quote 
Imagine getting drone striked at Arby's. The fact that we're even discussing this today shows you how absolutely absurd political discourse has gone, where literally MSNBC compares people who don't like lockdowns to individuals like Anwar Alawaki, you know, the radical cleric YouTuber who was previously invited to the White House and then was assassinated in a secret drone program when he was still an American citizen and never had his day in court. And now this is the same equivalent from from individuals that don't like lockdowns, which again, isn't really a controversial view since there's even many scientists, medical professionals, and studies done showing that lockdowns actually have an adverse effect on cities and states in America. As of course, even Matt Agarist pointed out that the levels of daily deaths from the conholio sickness compared to Kohler, Florida, and Imperial, California is staggering. Of course, highlighting this with, of course, the start of the mask mandate that happened in Imperial, California, and showing the number of, of deaths skyrocketing up and down compared to, of course, Collier, Florida, which dealt with this sickness a lot better than they did. And in Florida, there's no mandatory mask mandates that will fine or jail people for not wearing masks. The reason Matt Agregist brought up Corler, Florida is specifically because this was the latest target of NBC News today with their attack on a supermarket in that city, Collier, Florida, where people weren't wearing masks. This, of course, was outrage, front-page news, headlines, sensationalistic garbage reactions that, of course, totally obfuscate any data, any science, any logical form of thinking, just trying to use emotional manipulation in order to shame and attack nice ladies who chose not to wear masks. This is their, their lead headline story. And if you don't believe in their agenda and their narratives and their talking points, MSNBC wants to take you out in a drone program that, by the way, had over 90% of innocent people killed, according to documents from special operations campaigns that were run in Afghanistan nearly 90% of people killed in drone strikes in Afghanistan were not the intended targets. And this is the program Nicole Wallace wants to bring back because people aren't believing their nonsense anymore. And of course, it's not just your assassination that they're calling for. They're also calling for, of course, censorship, which has been matched by many prominent voices who are speaking out against this to be completely silenced by the big tech oligarchs who are more than happy to get power that, of course, the mainstream media is begging them to have to address this issue. And now there's even some news organizations going as far as to call for the removal of Fox News from cable television. Yes, move on along with CNN are launching a targeted attack on major cable providers trying to take out their competition, of course, all being done in the name of protecting democracy and freedom and the sanctity of our government, which also, by in hand, tremendously is going to help them out after the recent ratings drop-off that has happened in primetime cable news shows, which shows CNN has lost nearly half of their viewers since, of course, Joe Biden took the presidency. Now, if you remember, we've been telling you, when Joe Biden takes office, there's going to be a bloodbath in the news media business. And that's exactly what we're seeing right now. It's CNN losing 43 to 44.9% of its viewers from 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. Even Fox News lost nearly 6% of their viewers during Sean Hannity's broadcast. And MSNBC lost nearly 20%. As, of course, the only person to do well and actually increase their ratings and their viewership is Tucker Carlson that was able to get 0.13% more viewers than he typically had. Way more than CNN had that's losing followers and viewers hand over fist. And in my own personal opinion, this is why really they want to take down Fox News because Ron Think is totally unacceptable to them and it exposes the larger narratives that they're pushing for the interests of the billionaire class. Also, very interestingly, cases in the United States last week dropped 44%. Now they're up to 50%. The cases and infections keep dropping dramatically in the United States, by the way. We're seeing a lot of this in, in foreign media coverage like the Daily Mail. Not a lot in the American press, which is why I'm bringing it up here again on this independent media channel. Since, of course, they're trying to centralize information as much as they can because they know it's the only way that they could 
control people. This is why they called for censorship of online platforms, and that's happened. They called for censorship of prominent individuals. That has happened. They called for censorship of independent media. By and large, that has happened in incredible levels. They're calling to end Fox News from cable TV. They previously banned the New York Post, another mainstream media publication, from publishing information that was actually found out to be accurate during an election. And now, if it's not MSNBC dreaming about drone striking you for wrong think, it's NPR interviewing a CIA counter in insurgency officer who even without rebuttal was able to talk about how we need to use terrorist counterinsurgency tactics on American homeland against the American people for wrong political thing. The same ones that they, of course, used in Afghanistan and Iraq that, of course, failed miserably. And when you look at the record of the CIA, what are they going to do? finance the the terrorists drone bomb some weddings and hell if msnbc has their way maybe under the foreign intelligence surveillance act and the foreign intelligence intelligence surveillance court is the secret court that weighs as i said in secret the legal justification for putting together a search of metadata linked to a person or persons and then gives it an okay or not okay, and it is on a time limit. General Hayden, you can find out all these things David just said about me, about David, about anyone in this audience. That is a function of operational capability. I'd like you to talk about whether you're comfortable with that operational capability. If so, why? And how often is it used in the ways that David described? Yeah, first, first of all, David's description of what you can do with metadata, and quoting a mutual friend, Stuart Baker, is absolutely correct, okay? We kill people based on metadata. Thank you, Control Room, for getting that clip of Michael Hayden, former director of NSA and CIA, and then uh, putting that at the end of the Luke Radowski, where he's, he's talking a lot about censorship toward the end. That's also gonna tie into our next clip. Our next clip tonight is from James Corbett. It's a public service announcement. Apparently, in order to learn about World War I, you need to log into YouTube and verify your age, and they need to track your metadata on that. They're interested in anyone who's learning about that history, specifically, uh, I think it's called World War I Conspiracy, which the official story, by the way, spoiler alert of World War I, was that it was a conspiracy. We're going to learn a little bit about conspiracy and cabals later tonight. But first, let's go to James. I think it's like a, a minute and a half update on where you can find this. It's life-giving information. If you understand how the past unfolded and what's going on at the present, you can pretty much predict what they're doing next and then what you need to do to maintain your freedom in the stead. All right, so let's go ahead and roll this clip from James, and then we'll unfold the rest of the journey after that. Hey guys, James Corbett here, CorbettReport.com. Just a quick note for you. I just uh, received a message from a listener who was wondering about the World War I conspiracy, which I hope you know by now is my three-part documentary about the World War I conspiracy, aptly enough, and that is available at CorbettReport.com slash WWI, World War I. And I hope people will go there to access the documentary. I hope they do not try to access the documentary on GooTube, Google YouTube, because, surprise, surprise, uh, part two and part three of that three-part documentary have both been age-restricted. How dare you try to watch a documentary about World War I? That's only for adults who sign in to YouTube uh, in order to have the privilege of watching the documentary. No, no. As has been observed before, Screw YouTube. So no, please do not try to sign in and give YouTube your credentials in order to watch part two and part three of the World War I conspiracy. That is nonsense. As I really hope my audience knows by now, all of my work is always backed up on other platforms. First and foremost, CorbettReport.com. Go to CorbettReport.com slash WWI and you can watch all three parts of the World War I conspiracy individually on Library, on BitChute, on DTube. You can download the MP4 video. You can download the MP3 audio of the entire uh, pod, uh, podcast slash documentary. Or, as I am going to do now, because 
well, GooTube doesn't want you to see it, so I'm going to take, for the first time, all three parts of that documentary, put them together as one complete documentary and upload that. I will be uploading it to my Corporate Report Extras YouTube channel as well, why not? But more importantly, it will be on Library, on Minds, on BitChute, on Archive.org. It will be available as an MP4 download from my server directly. Please, please do go there. Go to CorbettReport.com slash WWI for the complete documentary. That's the place to get it, not YouTube. Please do not sign into YouTube in order to watch any of my videos or anyone else's videos. Do not give them your data. Do not give them your time. Do not give them your attention. Do not give them your energy. Do not give them your money. Do not give them your mind. And hopefully we can construct a better system elsewhere without Google being a uh, silent third party in all of our information transactions. Anyway, just a quick note, just a word to the wise. If you haven't seen the World War I conspiracy, or if you just want to see it again, and I suggest there are a number of things in that documentary that are worth learning or relearning, as the case may be, please go to CorbettReport.com slash WWI. Please do not watch it on YouTube. This has been a word of warning and uh, hopefully a helpful note to the Corbett Reportees in the crowd. This is James Corbett of CorbettReport.com. Looking forward to talking to you again in the near future. Now, when I saw that video from James come across the YouTube yesterday or the day before, I thought it was a little ironic because that's actually a series. First off, all of his series have great handles, meaning uh, there's a lot of integrity and substance and meaning, and it's easy to hand around to other people, and they can draw that from that. So it's like a, it's like good science. It's like you go through a, a set of steps, arrive at a conclusion. You can hand that set of steps to somebody else and they can verify, yes, I found that this is true and this is true. Oh, I had a question about this, but I looked it up. And then you guys have a conversation at the at the same uh, intellectual level, given the, the pieces of evidence that James assembles in any of his documentaries. So there's uh, How and Why Big Oil Conquered the World series. There's this uh, documentary series on Bill Gates. And then we were just listening to the the saga of the World War One conspiracy. Uh, that was a that was a group project. There was a whole bunch of people who participated in that, along with me uh, and James. Writing, uh, James wrote that whole thing, and Brock puts it together. And then they had picked out a couple different people to talk about some of these points in there. And I remember thinking that it was again, I'll use the word unassailable. There was uh, facts aligned, not out of context, but very much relevant and substantial throughout that whole three part series. So the fact that they're trying to hide that, I did find it an effective piece of content and media to share with friends and family who were very receptive to it, found it interesting, ended up watching the whole thing, watch it twice, watch it three times. So that's why they want to limit access to that type of knowledge because they're not purveying it. It doesn't hold their spin and their propaganda and their strategic messaging for the narrative that's unfolding. In fact, it does a lot to undo, very much undo people's assumptions and beliefs in those types of narratives that are very disempowering because uh, there's a saying, uh, I think it's on the Washington Post, it says, democracy dies in darkness. Well, that's true because they're censoring people. Thank you for watching this clip from Grand Theft World. You can find us on grandtheftworld.com. You can also see us every Sunday night, 9 p.m., streaming live on rockfin.com forward slash Richard Grove. You can create a free account you can see the live stream because YouTube's banning it and uh, we're moving elsewhere. So we'll continue to put clips here on YouTube. Thank you again for taking time to sample it. But what we want you to do is see the whole episode. You know, you've got 168 hours in a week. It's not unreasonable to take five hours strategically to invest in understanding what's going on in the world, catch up on some contextual history, and we have some fun along the way. Also, if you go to GrandTheftWorld.com, we have a community feature there. You can sign up. You get a weekly briefing, a rundown of all the things that we found valuable during the week, maybe some things that got censored and moved to other platforms. You'll get relinked re up to that, a whole bunch of other benefits that come with subscription. And if that's too much for you, just go to GrandTheftWorld.com and download the 2040 Strategic Trends document. It's a summary of what the British Ministry of Defense uh, has planned for everyone's families going in the future. So become aware of the plans that exist. Also, fortify your knowledge with uh, things that are substantial and meaningful and help you understand so you can make better decisions. That's the purpose of the Grand Theft World podcast, and we'll see you in the next clip. Thank you.